that was organized by me all the way back in October of 2020. Now it is uh, December, but unfortunately for me, you know, once this tournament concluded, my studies got real busy and I didn't manage to cast all of the games. I got what replays I could and I've had it sitting on me until now, but now is the time to finally cast the game and see what else happened that day. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so this was a 2v2 tournament. It was, I organized it from contributions of the Singapore community and these were for players from Southeast Asia. And we're going to be casting it in chronological order. Basically, okay, I'm not going to scroll down because there are some spoilers. But if you look at it, if you do look at the future, if you scroll down, if you look at this page, here's the link, you will see what it is. And basically, I'm just going to be casting the games of round one. And then we'll see what else I want to do tonight. But with that said, let me preload the first game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, this is on an older version of the client, so I'm not casting it with anyone. It was a while. Anyway, I, I need to pause this. Uh, is it synced? Okay, so let's go. Well, it should be quite exciting. Oh, wait, I need to... Uh, change my, my my thing. Hold on. I have not changed the name of the game. Stream information. No more Pox Nora for today. Back to StarCraft 2. Two. All right, that should have been done. Alright, back to the actual game now. Alright, so spotting at the bottom. Team S... You know what? They're, they're from the same team. I'm just going to call them Team SCPH. It is Dismal and Hole of the Philippines. Spotting as a double tavern duo. And their opponents on the other side. From MFSC2 and MFSC2. Okay, it is Hut and Caesar, so we are getting a gigantic TVT. Ah, alright, so so let me tell you what I know about these guys. Okay, so Paul and Dismal are actually from uh, Philippines. I know Dismal is actually the organizer of the SC uh, PH quarantine tournaments. Things, you know, doing good stuff for the... See, they actually like this, so it seems that they're definitely coordinated, they definitely have some gameplay, they're, more, they're, they're doing a double wall off. Contrast this with the Australian players. Yes, I know they're Australian. Um, Hut is walling off, but Caesar is not. He's just doing whatever, getting a single gas. So this was played in the first round. So this is the upper bracket. So we're going to get a best of three after this. Um, after that, however, we are going to be switching to... We are going to be switching to... The lower bracket, I think I've only got one or two games of the lower bracket, unfortunately. There's some teams that either they did not send it in or I have completely lost them. So, uh, most unfortunate. Alright, so nobody's going for the expansion yet. They're both going for, um, um you know, can this kind of standard 111 builds? Okay, this ball and this coming here to fight Caesar's SCV. Not too much happening as of just yet. Okay, so here comes the first expression out of this one. The other side, they're just tacking up. This looks like perfectly standard uh, 111 builds out of the Australians, out of Team MF. What was it? MFSC2. I should check what team they are. Uh, okay. Okay, very good. Since they're actually sending a Marine out over to this dead space. So think about this map. I don't know if it's still in the 2v2 map pool, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it is. There's, there's this dead space over here. Which is really nasty for drops and dinosaur worms if there were any. Reapers gonna hit out. Nobody actually going for a cheese. Again, I don't know how used these two guys are to uh, playing in actual tournaments. But they're both, I think either Masters or GM, Caesar and Hunt respectively. Both very good Australian players. A pig over here. Polska sent his Reaper to, I guess, just leave. 
Um, right, see the hot rally? Quite a bit of reinforcements over to the dead space. Paul just putting down a single supply depot to, uh... To, uh, to, to, to this corner. It gives you, okay, so it looks like the northern team is going for a cloaked banshee. I can't really tell what tech they're going for. Um, at this stage, it could be bio, it could be mech. Uh, Hunt is going for Hellions, but that's not objective that he's going to swap out. This looks like a very TVZ-ish build, but this can be done in TVT. Um, it's a bit worrying because, okay, Hulk actually calls out no expo. Uh, it's kind of worrying, like, he should have been on a Discord channel coordinating their attack. Uh, but that just does not seem to be the case. It looks like they're powering up. They're just going for that aggression. Both sides are actually going to go for Cloak Banshee. Something I'm not so sure is the best decision. I always feel that in 2v2s you should... Like, whatever your your ally is attacking into, you don't take the exact same thing. Because I'll, there are things that count as like... You, like Again, if, if this is scouted, um, t the Filipino team just gets Ravens, which you should, because TVT, you get Missile Turrets. And it's going to be fine. Okay, backdrop, uh, Paul says. Okay, so they spot the Banshee, I think. They am actually quite a scary force coming to the front. A few Widow Bites out here, but that's not that consistent a defense. Nobody has gone for, for tanks. In fact, uh, this one is just pumping out Widow Bites, and here comes the attack. Oh, this is the worst possible timing for Dismal. He's going to lose every SCP down here. He's going to drop the Bites. He's going to do a Bite drop onto his own base in order to try and defend it, but none of them go off. Um, and they can still get all this with one good mind. That's one hell of a good pull from, uh, from, from Hunt, but that's the thing, there's no consistent damage. The mines were here, they draft, drove into it, problem solved. Okay, so it loses a bunch of SCVs and Vikings, and now after this, what fuck's a Viking gonna do realistically, right? Okay, now a pulse, probably gonna have to pull a Psycho and a Reaper. Try to defend it. Oh, all the good mines are, uh, just knocked out by, by Hunt. I mean, this, this knocks the wind out of his sails by, uh, the, the wind out of the sails because those bites were planned for Widow Bite. Actually, I don't know. Like, oh, and behind all this, Hunt actually sent in the uh, Banshee. Apparently, I don't think they have a scan. Like, okay, somebody needs to scan. I think the Philippine team are just scrambling to try and deal with this. But what is ultimately light pressure? A scan goes down and goes, doesn't even get the Banshee. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, well this is pretty bad. Um, the missile tower is not done. The airplane's done now and finally the sub detection. But this bench has got a lot of kills. 12 kills, 13, 14. And it's still gonna live. Like this is why you go Raven in TVT early, is to prevent you know, this, this from happening. But apparently they went Medivacs, they went the Vikings. They are forced to burn a lot of scans but they can't actually afford it. And this bench actually gets out. Another bench is coming. Is this the same place, Banshee? Yeah, yeah, it's Hunt's Banshees. She has a lot of Banshees, like... It's, it's almost an overkill of Banshees, if you will. Now, behind all this, uh, we look at the worker count. Yeah, the Filipino team has been knocked down quite a lot due to due to that attack. And, um, still ongoing, in fact. They were able to stop the building of the tower. Okay, but here come those three other Banshees. That is a missile tower, so it's not going to be too bad. But, it's not going to be enough either. They're still outside of... Outside of range, they're still, you know, unable to actually get anything done, most unfortunately. And with that, there's a strong bio push out of season. This looks like a very 1v1 um, build. Okay, this tank a little far forward. No way, no, these are serious old force. Okay, this basically oh, dies in a few Matrix. Uh, second type of form is fire. I don't know if we can bring this, especially if there's going to be a 2 one What all the leads? We could interference Matrix, but there's nothing too much to follow up the attack. Oh, no way, the tank is in range. Might be able to take down Caesar's tank. It's going to get him. Okay, this is the tank. Looks like it's going to be deflected, but at what cost? At what cost? And uh, the badge he's got in, it got even more damage done during, during that attack. And uh, Paul's supply block. So supply deep for this standard response. See this actually taking a third base on location, whereas the Filipino team, even though they expanded first, have not been able to add uh, this was also supply block. Okay. Oh, this, this position is so abusable on um, Rock Scallion, which is you just siege up here. And you can just elevate the stuff. Because in fact, during I think it was the okay, here comes the draw, but I 
Okay, the bike is actually distracting you long enough. The other bike is not able to stop the drop that this attack is pushed back, but the missile tower does go down. That could be a factor should the badges come back to play. Where are the badges? Okay, they've gone home. They've actually been given to spade to service. Another drop by hunt into the base of uh, this was an expansion under a lot of that. This just came completely unscouted as you try to take it. Next base, Paul is going to come in to try to defend his ally, and these are going to interfere with Matrixes. And they will be able to stop this time, but don't lose the Ravens. Okay, he's going to lose the tanks, but not the, the, the Medivax, and thankfully not the Ravens. They need to be repaired pronto. This was actually going to launch attack of his own, but there are already Vikings positioned. Um, there is a floating rack, so it looks like um, the Australian player C there has gone for a heavy back build, which kind of makes sense. You know, one player goes for back, one player goes for bio. The South, both, both of the South players are going for bio. Okay, I like the split out of the, the Australians. A bio back split. Hunt is going for bio. Oh, look at all the flashing lights. There's so much happening. A doom drop. My heart is ravaging Paul's face. Paul's face, rather. Whereas this muscle's drop is not able to get anything done. There's just too much anti. And here, the Air Force is not going to let it in. But whereas this is completely uncontested, the tanks are coming back and the. Uh, I don't know what they're saying, and these are huts. And these are huts badges. I mean, the Australian players are just tearing apart the Filipino players bit by bit, step by step. Tanks of Paul are gonna siege up, so they're gonna stop this attack from going in any further. Um, Dismos is sending stuff out, but he can't get into the base, there's just too much here. Paul's bringing over his ravens, and maybe they can make a difference, but he just doesn't have the air power to contest this. Meantime, this base is still going all the the badge from Hart takes down even more SCPs. And this look look like, like they're fighting with a tiny portion of their army like yeah it's a siege but it's not sieging anything of true value. Whereas this deck is still getting work done, Hunt is still getting things killed. In fact the badges of Hunt are beautiful play knocked out the tanks and now the tanks of Hunt are gonna push deeper and deeper into um this most base. I think it's just gonna attempt to do stuff but nobody chooses not to commit loses two for the Medivacs. GG this call from this ball, and I think with that we're gonna see the end of the first game, and with that, the Australians victorious. Well, there was something. Hold on. Hold on. Alright, oh, let me get the next game ready. Core screen, alright. This is gonna take a little bit of loading because every time I load the game, it has to leave and then go back in um, because I'm playing on an older client so it's going to be a lot of loading, a lot of typing in passwords gonna skip. I'm going to try and learn if I can skip that Alright, so on to the next game. I think I can switch the seeds now. Yep. Wait for it to load. It takes a while, but it'll, it'll get there. Heavy Artillery LE, okay. Alright, so this is either game 1 or game 2, I don't actually know, but spotting at the bottom of Heavy Artillery from Australia, one of their best players in is Hunt, and his teammate, the Blue Terran Seether. On the other side, another double Terran team from the Philippines, they are currently down a map, and does this work? Yes it does, it is Paul and Dismal. Again, um, when the replays were sent in, it didn't have, you know, timestamps or naming, so I don't actually know which game came first. Uh, but I'm just gonna play that because it, in this particular case, well, you'll see, you'll see. Alright, so the thing about this map, Heavy Artillery, is that it's a fundamentally different map from Roxcallion or Emerald City. Is that, number one, you have a pocket base at the back. And, number two, you actually have two bases in front and a single shared ramp. Um, it's it's also got more drop angles for both sides 
and this applies to, to both teams. So you get an easy five bases to yourself. You can have to debate amongst yourself which one it is. I think this is what the more quote unquote balanced 2v2 maps because if you're playing with a Zerg ally, the Zerg takes the two here, you take the one at the back, and at least that stabilizes. Or the Zerg could take the one at the back, one at the front, you take one at the front. Um, and there's a lot of. There's a lot of actually debated. Wait, 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 wait. Dismals is actually cheesing, but. Pult is not. Okay, so. Okay, let's take a look at what Dismal is up to. Okay, Pult's not making SCV. Okay, never mind. He's got a single gas and he's gonna be making Reapers, I guess? Yeah, but. I, I, I disagree with this. It's either you both cheese or you don't. Maybe a single Reaper pressure could get something done, but again, you're going up against two Terrans. They're both gonna have Reapers. You're gonna be on equal Reaper count against two players who are microing separately against your one micro. So unless you have like a very specific plan back at home to deal with this, I can't see you know this doing all too too much damage. Okay, so he's actually gonna be mining out the minerals. I don't I think he I think he made a mistake. I think he didn't know or maybe he didn't, because two SCVs Okay, 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 so this is important. Hunt actually notices the middles are gone. He's gonna find these Reapers. But he actually gets the first shot damage and oh no, this is actually going really bad. Okay, Pult's actually gonna come in, but they're not gonna get it. Pult's bases are so far away, he's not gonna be able to reinforce this attack. Very real speed. He's gonna go into the main, but maybe he gets an SCV at best, but there's not really gonna be too much more to it. Uh, okay, he gets one SCV, that's nice, that's nice, but the helmet pops out. And we're gonna have a huge mob coming into the battle. Uh, down here between Dismal and Hunt. I think Paul's Reaper died. I think. Yeah, Paul's one singular Reaper died. Other Reapers are streaming all the way across the map. But again, this better than Mark is going to be so high for. Um, single G out of Paul. I think he knows how screwed he is. I don't know how well this attack was coordinated. Okay, so four Reapers of here are going to jump in. But see, this force is going to rotate around there. Unless you have even with more Reapers to deal with. Two, two, Oh, oh no, this has to be a fist click, but all of this most Reapers are eventually gonna die. Is it? Are they gonna be getting enough done? See so much free, free damage, quote unquote, between the Terran players, the Southern Terran players. Um, but Paul's doing some damage, but with a good repair, not too much done. Realistically, we look at the units lost. Um, okay, so this most lost three Reapers. Paul lost a Hellion and Reaper. The other two only lost three SCVs. A very good trade for the Sun Terrans. That's still ongoing because the overwhelming might. <laughs> Terry Paul. So the overwhelming might of the South just just driven the Northern players back into, oh, back into the hole. And does he have a siege tank? Siege tank is all the way, but it's not done yet. It's a very good window to hit. Okay, at least this is done. You can turn it into an orbital. You can run your SCVs away because this is the obvious response. How much should they have on the high ground? Wait. Nothing. The southern team has literally no army. They've got enough DPS to break this. When the tank comes out, they could just force their position in. And yeah, they're just gonna drive in. They, they've got too much. Like the, the standard maps are one one. This doesn't apply. And yes, this tank is doing a lot of damage. But these Hellions and Reapers, they are gonna get it. You know, a good repair was able to save it for a little bit. But there was also at the cost of SCVs. And uh, okay, so another siege tank is done for this one. At least he's gonna be able to hold, but Paul is gonna be completely and utterly ransacked at the bottom, unfortunately for him. So he's burning down to a crisp. Um, unfortunately, Paul hit Paul and this was poor players. They they happen to hit some of the strongest players and oh hey look a liberator from Cena and there's absolutely no end here. Well the two Marines, which these guys see they can just like snipe. Um, oh the oh a bad Oh, the tank was still in range. A lot of the Liberator was in range of the tank. Actually, these guys can just jump on the, uh, the Marines rather than a single bike. Kick is out, is able to get something. A better tank for how to reinforce it very quickly. And um, if we look at the units right now, yeah, it's three SCVs for disposal. Second CC down. It doesn't matter. Hunt also has a second CC down anyway. A very curious decision. Oh, this was also as a natural, but. But Caesar and Hunt's naturals are both up and running and fully saturated. Um, yeah, Missile Tart's going down for the Northern team? Okay, maybe just afraid of additional Liberator harassment. This has been a beautiful start for the Terran, for the Southern Terrans. Again, I do think it comes down to that assault not really working. 
Uh, again, like if you're gonna pull this kind of cheese, both players have to commit, have to agree. This base is under a lot of trouble because this tank is not gonna be able to reinforce your forces to lift off, get some shots on the Raven, but it's really not gonna be enough because. Like this lost my time is terrible. But like Paul's income is almost nothing compared to the rest of the players. I mean the mules are forced off the middle line. There is an auto raven that was just harassing that killed a few more SCVs. Uh this place has been re-established, but now that see these tanks are here, they're gonna be shutting away at this planetary all day. Okay, a tank is here, it needs to see each other and see this neither of them in range, but they are in range of this particular CC actually you should just lift it up and move it over here. I don't know why you did take this base first, which is what the other southern players did, to be honest, but uh there's just too much here I feel. Oh this lightning's gonna go down. Yep. This bird Paul just doing the darn hardest to hang on. The SCV's taking a lot of shots. Oh look at that hang time with that SCV. Well this is gonna burn down for sure. Okay, this both decides to um, order his troop to pick the rocks. Not a bad decision, but if you look here, okay, neither side of combat show just yet. Where's my production tab? Uh, is the game being captured? Yes, yes, it is. Alright, more auto turret harass. Double harassment by uh, Caesar, actually. They've got no fear, no chill. Oh, this one with how much 1 HP left drops down the auto turret. It's gonna kill a whole bunch of uh, SCVs. And then, just all it has to do is rotate and go down, because Hut's army will be here to. Defend it, even if the Viking attempts to 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 chase it. Oh man! Now hard gonna fly over, gonna get that gold base, gonna get all the blue lies. What about my uh, Starcraft students tell me? All right, so it looks like both sides in the south are attempting to go bio. Paul really doesn't have much at all. His SCV count is is it's 15 to 30 against 51 and 60. Like the south is making so so much money. That uh, and again the macros are really on point too. Uh, both sides are going bio. In fact, everyone I think is going bio. Okay, another good drop to bait, but um, Hunt is actually target firing down a lot of the bikes before they expect to be trading for those of gas. Okay, finally this most land. Oh, this is not target firing down the right tank. Target fires down one tank. He's gonna get another no Oh, he's basically just being ransacked from inside. Out. Oh, very unfortunate. Uh, game very unfortunate drop the bracket actually. Like, this is the first round you just have to hit. Look, I don't know what the bank for at this point. I assume they're pretty really good, but. Against the Australian Masters? Uh, what? See the result. And with that, this ball has left the game. Alright, so that was the first round. Okay, so if you actually look at the bracket, um, there was another series in the upper bracket, basically Vivid and somebody against um, Neutrals and somebody else, but we couldn't get that replay. So we're now going to be moving down to the... Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to cast something else instead. I'm going to cast a game from the for round two of the upper bracket, because it then allows me to cast the rest of round one. Okay, let's log back in.
Oh, and we are back. Following on that. Back it into the second round. It is... Did I switch the seeds? I have not. Alright. Hmm, hold on. It's not capturing. Okay, we can continue. Alright, so following how it sees it a little further. So this is round two. This is in the upper bracket. Spotting at the top. We saw them be the Filipino players. Will they be able to do it again? From Australia, it is Hut and Caesar. And at the bottom, not playing a match yet and giving us some variety, it is Koi and Byangnyo. Now, I don't know about Koi, it's the first time I've ever seen any of his games, I don't know what rank he is. Gyangyu, I believe is a... Okay, he's from Vietnam, but he's a high diamond low masters, I think. He's pretty good. Um, not like the likes of, honestly, Justice Simon, who also played in this tournament. But this should give us some variety, so it's going to be held heavy artillery again. And it's going to be... Yeah, uh, hold on. Yeah, and these guys, again, this is the first time I've seen them play. They, they didn't actually defeat anyone to get here, they were just seeded. Uh, they had a more lucky seed, if you will. And Gyangnyo pulled off a gas steal, which is a nice touch, because a gas steal against a Terra does actually mess up the build order. If you look at what Seed is doing, this is... Something that you might want to do if you want to get a factory right after this, which is, you're definitely going to get a factory. No other reason to do this. Uh, okay, so Gyeongdo has stayed a little too long, it's going to lose a pro for honestly not too much. So it's trying to delay the CC, but it can't. Um, Hunt, honestly, I think he also wanted to do it. Also wanted to get this, but he decided to get a CC first, partially I think due to the gas deal. Um, and I mean, it's something, because at least it forces the Reaper home, it buys you a lot of time. And uh, in the meantime, the game just goes on, nothing too much. Adept to double Stargate, okay. You're not gonna have to guess for that, or are you? Hmm. Double Stargate against Terran, though. Again, I don't know whether Gyeongnyu and Koi practice for this, whether what rank they are on the 2v2 ladder. But uh, okay, so Gyeongnyu is finally gonna take another base, which is quite late by 1v1 standards, but it's gonna get out a single Adept. Can you afford this? Okay, so it's gonna be... Phoenix. Okay, so Gyangnu is gonna go into double Phoenix production, although he doesn't actually have the middles for it. Um, a good defense out front. He knows... Well, I guess they checked that these middles. So actually, they, 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 they did it. I'm actually putting down a very defensive bunker. And as uh, they're picking, I don't really know who or why. Uh, Caesar has a very very good defensive setup. I don't think they scared or anything right now. So the other players, neither team really knows about what the others are doing. There's actually an attack coming out and oh Widowmite goes off, takes out of the depth. But will they be able to get the Widowmite as revenge? I think they will. This will give the, the Widowmite's master Huck, Huck and by extension Caesar, advanced knowledge that this attack is in. I can't really see it doing too much because even though this one adept is probably gonna shade, they're actually split off like um, the Hellions can't attack from here. The um, Adept is actually gonna get an SCV kill. Oh it doesn't, it comes out of range and she has to shade out of she shades onto the ramp where a whole bunch of things just gun her down. A very good defense out of Huck and did it lose anything? Okay so Huck lost a widow mine but traded out for an adept. Um, um Koi actually didn't lose anything which is nice but yeah, I know it was quite expensive trade. It's gonna go into Phoenix production. I can't remember if this was before the Void Ray buff. But Mass Phoenix is still a very legitimate style in 2v2 because it gives you so much mobility, so much map control, very nice skins out of Gyeongnyo. Alright, they're probably gonna fly in and see what they can get, but look at this widow mind spread. It's beautiful. Alright, they're probably going to try and dive onto this. 
Uh, they're gonna take a shot. I have to get another shot. Yep, takes quite a few losses, and now you don't have the critical. Messi gonna lose another Phoenix. I mean, that's the thing. When you fly, you gotta keep your eyes peeled on the side of the bases, because even if you can't, um, if you don't have detection, you can actually see the black dots of the widow mines, and you can try and avoid them. But there was no way for him to get into the base. If he had actually attacked here in Hut's base and flew it from the other angle, he would have probably had a better, um, a better time. But there, there is some luck in Starcraft, to as much we hate, hate to admit it. Oh my, is Caesar gonna come into this attack? Kyagnu is still just producing Phoenix, he's actually getting a Robo, which is a good decision. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a combined push. Again, this is the advantage of Yep, you can see the pink symbol going up here. Kyagnu knows he's gonna get the, the under attack, they need to scramble, they need to do something. They need to pick their battleground. Okay, a single widow mine leading the charge. Oh, this is just not enough for Koi. They're not even sieged. Ironically, that one widow mine kind of gives away their position, but he's still not sieged. And the season brought along a BC. Okay. I have full vision and I didn't even see that. Auto turrets are coming down. It's not enough DPS. Two tanks are Koi just going down there. Then the Phoenixes, oh, they were not with the main army. Maybe they were trying to prevent a doom drop, but they did scout any. Um, they did not scout any that I don't know why they tried or bothered. Okay, this Raven is definitely there, but this PC is giving so much. The SCD is being forced to be pulled off the line. Some tanks are being pulled. A tactical jump is going to go into Kyagnyo's base. I think he will just rotate and deal with that, but at the front, eyes are very bloody fight is happening. Kyagnyo needs to reposition his. Uh, oh, beautiful! Shuba is actually preventing that from happening. The Phoenixes are. Yep, now flying in. This PC is dead. Void Rage of Brute. Not so sure if PC is just designed to see. Oh, another PC comes in and actually target fires down the shield battery. Okay, then. Young Neo's S with counter F. Air Force is gonna come in and punish this PC. I think it was a TP because. Yep, yeah, it's a TP, so two pieces go down. Quite, quite, quite good, quite good. But if you look at the supplies hunt and Caesar are back going, well, the back honestly is better. And even though supplies are quote quote. Even, um, well, it's 50, 52 at 60 against 44 at 39. The northern team's back row is just, well, it's gonna be too much soon. Uh, these SCVs, and I'm gonna go and buy the gold. Oh, let's think about the sheer amount of bio. Right, so Caesar is going from back and hunt for, well, bio. Okay, these guys are gonna try and go in again. Now, there are a lot of missile turrets though, so I don't think we're gonna get too much charge Phoenixus loses what a very costly trade for a single SCV. Um, Hut's base, however, is not that well defended. Gyangnyo has not rotated around and tried to, to get it, unfortunately. He's still long distance mining, basically, just, just, just came up. Uh, he's getting more probes, which is, is a good thing. Taking this forward command center, I think this should be a planetary. You want to take, you take this base as the, as the orbital. The tanks are not seized with a mistake. I, I do feel that you kind of always want to have your tank seized just in case of an attack. Okay, I don't know which player is picking, but a uh, single cyclone is going to come here and be irritating. But actually, yeah, it's a lot of static defenses here. Like, Koi is going to be able to get a couple of SCVs at best. Okay, he's going to get a few more, but again, trading out middles and gas for just middles at best is never really a good trade. Koi and Hutt's marines are duking it out. One side has stem and the other side uh, doesn't. Okay, is he gonna pick up this one marine? Nope, Koi's marine actually gets away. But here comes another push out of uh, Hutt. I'm surprised neither player, neither side have gotten sensor towers. The uh, Caesar actually has an insane amount of money. Oh, playing back what he expects. He's getting his stores, he's getting his upgrades, he's getting drilling claws. He's still he's not gonna be he's just going to Ravens. And with that, somebody's ordering a general attack down on the main. We're gonna have to see how this comes out. Both places we've not been prepared. There's another scuffle happening here. Benefax being boosted back. I think it's playing for a doom drop, but now with this amount of air force here, I don't think it's gonna be able to do that. But you can just rotate and join. No, Koi is actually pushing. Now, they, if they kill at the same time and having a good sandwich position, it could be very tricky for both sides. Where's the air force? Why are they not jumping on this? 
Oh, we do a lot of Vikings though. Okay, they pick up the tech. This is a good play. This is a good play. Can't get a card. Out across the map, kind of on his... Uh, kind of a zone. I'm surprised that, the, especially the Phoenixes, they just jump on it and kill what they can. But... Okay, but see, it's retreating back to see the... The bio retreating back into the strong mech army. And look at the number of bases that uh, one player has... One team, rather, has... Over the other. Okay, so it looks like Gyangnyo and... Uh, Quai are gonna try and attack this northern base of, of Hana. But Hana has you know, taken the gold, he's spreading all his middles, he's got... They, I mean, the South team have a lot more supply, but it's divided. And the attack is called off. The strong back army of Caesar is rotating around, but not really gonna get anything done. Um, somebody's picking over the expansions. Actually, Koi's macro is honestly not that great because it's 62 to 70 and 50. Um, Hut not needing as many. Actually, he shouldn't be using the mules on. But the other matter, here comes the battle. Um, the Air Force is engaged. First, Koi doesn't really engage from the, the Colossus are doing some damage, but it's just not enough. It's not enough to protect us again. Should have the Maya was here by the different story. There was an attempted sandwich, but um, the Colossus army gets completely annihilated. And this allows the combined Terran armies to just counter-rotate, in fact, and be able to threaten all the bases of the, the other players. A lot of Widow Mines, a lot of Thorns, just too much muscle. Um, Pianyu's air army is coming back. In fact, oh, see, there's actually coming there, cutting off with Force the Northern army. There's not a lot of tanks, but ironically, the bio army of Hut is just keeping um, quite distracted, while Caesar moves around and has just, just blew up a base. Yeah, I do wisely cancel the base, don't know why I didn't bother taking the gold. Um, a lot of reinforcements are coming in, but... I mean, if Caesar just decided to sandwich this, it would be over. Maybe they're gonna attempt to launch a single combined um, assault right here, right now. No, it's gonna be a slow switch. Oh, we can actually hit it from here! He will not air units to be able to destroy Koi's middle line, and then... Okay, 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 so there are Phoenixes here to contest this. Uh, but it decides to decide, looks like they're not gonna commit now. Nah, just yeah, at the end of this this line of red and blue, just heading across the map. And yeah, he's getting some good shots. Takes out a single tank from uh, Cedar. But here's the thing: Coin needs the bird scans in order to get this. He can't even send in the Phoenixes. And in the meantime, Hunt launching a drop into the heart of uh, Gyakdo's base. Now he's got significant forces. Yeah, he's got Colossi, he's got Void Race. Those are generally not too bad on their own. Um, drop is gonna get cleaned up. I don't know how many SCPs they kill. I'm gonna try keep, keep, keep an eye on, the, on that siege earlier, but this is a beautiful. Oh my god, it gets so many. Look at the target fire. A lot of them just going, just going down. And with that gang the economy, is just shed right back. I'm uh, quite attempting a drop, but it's far less successful. Hunt just rallied his reinforcements and, and deflected that with, with ease. The, the standoff continues between. Um, Koi's four siege tanks and un siege tank against the five siege tanks of Caesar and two more of Hut. Yeah, he should put these. Oh, he can't put them back to work. He's gonna try to jump on them. The Thor's not gonna take quite a bit of damage. Okay, looks like Koi's gonna try to jump on it, but it's a massive battle. Where is the Kronos? The Kronos are not engaging. Oh, beautiful sandwich on the other side. Koi's army is completely annihilated. Um, Yang Ryo just a bit too late, not even able to, to help out. And, oh, actually, this Colossus is doing a fair amount of damage, but now they've got nothing to tank. Maybe some good target fires can, can, can keep them off, but now tanks are seeing their RC, the death is closing. Reducing this tightening. The GG is getting a bit closer. All safe one of Yang Ryo's Colossus falls. The next Colossus is about to fall. GG one play is called by Koi. GG is rolled along and with that, Hunt and Caesar are victorious. Now, uh, unfortunately, we do not actually have the replay of the second game. Um, either it wasn't set in or I just couldn't find it. So, while so the eventual score of that match was 2 0. Spoilers.
Um, however, we are going to be moving down to the low bracket. We've got two more games to cast and then we'll call it a night. And we'll cast the rest um, next time. So in line with what we just saw, we're going to be following Gyeongnyo down into the loser bracket. Uh, let me find that replay. Ah. Okay, so this next match, again, is a loser's bracket, and loser's bracket is best of one. I... Yeah, I didn't want it to, to last too long. I didn't want, you know, the lower bracket, the guys in the upper bracket to really wait for lower bracket, especially because 2v2 games tend to take longer. And yes, this is the best of one. So spawning at the top, the joint Protoss team, the Vietnamese, it is Bokoria, and Miss Fanta. Miss Fanta is either the best or second best Protoss in all of Vietnam. Possibly play third or fourth best player. Pokoria is a master's uh, Protoss, but has not been able to claim such a title. But comes from Aodai all the time, which is nice. At the bottom we have Gyang Nyo and Koi, who is now playing Protoss. Interesting, so it's going to be a joint Protoss team. Yes, this was allowed. Okay, so basically what happened was on the day itself, and um, if you watch to the end of this video, there's going to be a link to the, the games that were casted live. Pokoria and Miss Fanta, the two Protosses, they hit, um, I think it was Prez and Azur, I think it was, in the upper bracket. And uh, who was it? Yeah, they hit Prez and Azur in the upper bracket and lost to zero, knocking them down to the lower bracket. We just saw Gyang Nyo and Koi um, get hit in the upper bracket and fall down to the loser's bracket. Again, Gyang Nyo is from Vietnam, I don't know about Koi. So it's going to be three Vietnamese across the, the board and Koi. So we're running a mass PP versus PP. And we'll just have to see how it goes. Neither side opting for anything too cheesy, but uh, let's see. Okay, so. Very interesting because the southern team actually bothered to wall off and the northern team just did it even though it's a PvP. PP versus PP to be more precise. Uh, okay so it looks like Koi is actually going to be expand... No, 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 Koi is actually just scouting. Like cannon rushes are pretty devastating in this game but everybody's opening standard PvP again with the exception of this wall. Which is actually not too bad because um, Koi will need to throw down Actually no, I think both players can put down a shield battery if need be to deflect against uh, Adepts. Wait a minute. Koi only went for one gateway. Okay, so he's not playing. No, Gyangdo has only went for one gateway. Okay, and a faster cyber core. Okay, Adepts. Uh, lots of Adepts from the south, Stalkers from the north. Um, this is really a problem because, okay, shield batteries will help, but double Adepts choose through shield batteries. Ah, okay, this makes sense. Gyangdu is actually going for a Stargate earlier. And again, Stargate is really powerful. Oh, we're getting a Divergent, so... Pakoa is going for Robo. Bart is going for Twilight. Um, Gyangdu is going for Stargate. And Koi is again going for Robo. Oh, it would be really cool if Koi went for, like, Forge or Fast Expand. But they're all doing one base builds. Pretty standard PvP as for now. Uh, if we look at the units, the northern team has gotten more workers, because if you get more workers, you can actually saturate the middle lines, you get more income. The most efficient number is the 16. But getting more still lets you more income overall. Okay, Fanta going straight for the Dark Shrine. The southern team, however, will have detection. And okay, here come the adepts. They're gonna shade into the base sooner rather than later. Okay, they actually got caught up by the stalkers. I think three adepts can they be two stalkers? I don't know, but here comes a mass shade. Um Gyangdu's going for Banter's base, which is kind of moot because Oh what the adepts got picked up now, they can't actually do any damage because the shoe barriers are gonna be healing up the workers. If the other adept actually got here, there was a chance of something you know, happening, but they 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 did get a scout. Did they see the dark shrine? I think they did. Gyangdu is calling for a calling for an observer, which would be there if Koi wasn't supply blocked, and it's quite a painful supply block. 
Uh, okay, both sides are now expanding. The northern team expanding faster than the southern team, generally speaking. But with observers, it's the DTs. So, so here's the thing: the DTs are not going to get too much done theoretically. But given the sheer size of this base, the question is: where will the observer be if and when the DTs hit? Um, observer coming off a fighter, which is quite an unusual decision. Normally, you get a warp prism to try and you know get something done with the DTs. But Koi is actually shading all the way into the base and there's no shield value here, it would have made a difference. Koi is supply blocked again. Okay, Gyang Liu is actually going to use his void he's going to actually call in battery overcharge, well mine as well. A bit, I mean some people say that's an overreaction, but can you? He's actually getting oracles, probably, I would dare say the fear of those um, same DTs. Fanta is now, you know, base is still not up. None of their bases are up actually. So they got all this army because they were afraid of the other player might attack. The other player, the other side didn't really attack. Oh, look at this probe spread. Okay, no wonder they're going to two separate bases. That makes a bit more sense. Okay, more. Okay, the DT is actually coming, but with good revelation, I don't think they they got a couple of kills, but oh, not being by another DT actually getting it. But I think this warp prism is dead because the warriors are going to chase it down. Another DT, however, gets quite a bit of damage done in the main. They do one shot it. Okay, revelation is called. And uh, Koi is going to help his ally clean up this, this attack. I always feel that if you're going to launch such such an attack, you should always have your ally do something else. Distract at the front. Um, uh, do a drop of his own. But again, because Pokoya opened up with uh, Robo, he's gone for Colossus in PvP, which is an unusual decision. Uh, Forge is coming down for Fanta, so it's not going to... I mean, that's one thing in Audi, was always ahead of his upgrades. We've got to have charge first. Now, Gyang Liu actually got a forge, but I don't think he's got it any upgrades whatsoever. Nope, they've all got warp gate. In fact, uh, Gyang Liu didn't even get warp gate. He's going to go for a pure air build. Which has its merits, which has its merits. Um, oh, these all cause they dive in here, they could get so much damage done. But there are units here that there's actually quite a push from Pokoria and Fanta. I don't think Koi spotted it with the hallucinated. Phoenix here, come the oracles, there's actually nothing here at all to defend. All the workers are gonna go down. Yep, good target fire, a whole bunch of workers um, just falling just like that. And Pokoria taking quite the beating. But while this is going, okay, just, okay, depending on the target fire, maybe. Yep, gets a few of uh, Fata's workers. As well, but the army is outside the base, the disruptor fires. Okay, they do quite a bit of damage to the, the ball for the Colossi. Ah, uh, but here's the Gyangdeo still has sizable air forces, doesn't he? Ah, uh, I think it is. Okay, here comes the battle battery overcharge is kind of OP. Good micro actually out of the prison. And uh, one Colossus falls, another Colossus gets so weak due to those disruptor shots. Another Dover comes out. It's not only a single uh, stalker, but oh, good pick up and saves. But for how long? There's so much air force here from Gyangdeo there. That, um, it's gonna be a tough one for either side. Oh, don't lose the disruptor, don't lose the disruptor. You'll want to charge the DT tail to the fight. The Phoenix should just lift up something because the Phoenix is not lifting up anything. Uh, more Phoenixes are being pumped out to the front line and they're taking a lot of damage. Boy, that is actually possible to pull and fight. Um, oh, the Fortress actually have gone across the map and uh, you know, ran Sacking Fighters. Base, not sure if they should be recalled or stay there and do damage. More Phoenixes. Being rallied and oh, what will the fighters want to look for? So only Pokoya can now, nope, it's gonna recall what he can and yep, gets out of there. And this is really, oh good lord. Okay, okay, let's just take stock of what happened in that really, really chaotic fight. Um, the southern team has more probes collected. They have a combined, let's see, 40 ish plus 30. Yeah, they're about 70 probes at the bottom. The northern team, Rabi Fanta especially, lost a lot of probes, probably due to the Oracle Void Ray combination. Um, in fact, Gangdo's Void Rays are still here, and they are still able to, you know, harass kill another probe here and there. Gangdo's probe comes falling through the floor. Uh, Gangdo says something in Vietnamese, Koi is giving the triple hearts. And with that, the game goes on, but the southern team is now in a... Ooh, well, a much stronger position. Oh, don't lose the void race though. What? Just recall them? Yep, okay, so there goes the recall. He's gonna to continue to produce uh, Phoenixes. I, I do feel that Gyang Liu and uh, Koi's ticket to victory is double ex is expanding and, you know, just 
Mercury Artist, getting the Golden Armada, getting more Disruptors. But at the same time, I... Well, see the thing about, you know, all games of StarCraft that you don't actually know if you're winning. And the Oracles come in and do a lot more damage. A lot more damage. Oh my gosh, Phantom would never let this happen in 1v1. But this isn't 1v1, it's 2v2. 4 DG chilling in the bay, not doing anything. That's a lot of resources um, wasted. Okay, so they now are expanding. Pokora is also expanding. Phantom doesn't even have money to re replace the probes. So expansion's currently out of the question. Oh man, just some cannons would have would have helped quite a bit. I would say totally because double oracles can shoot through shield battery energy. Um, it's actually quite a hard thing, you know, because one player against uh, Yangyo is going for air, Koi is going for ground. Uh, what's this? Okay, so it's gonna be Immortal Stalker, Disruptor. I mean, this is this is why this is just stronger because one side has an air force, the other doesn't. Um, Fata went for tech. Oh, disruptor job gets a few. Actually, gets nothing done, and but doesn't lose the prism. So we can still come back in here and get uh, something. I think at least connecting on the stalkers would be better than trying to you know bowling ball down the probes. But you know, heat of the moment. Battle is tense. Okay, Gangdo is going to skyrocket in terms of how much income he has, which we can see. Yeah, Gangdo is now. Binding up the most 2,000 minerals to about 1,000 to the rest, goal basis OP. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if Fata took this base and if he could hold it, there might have been a way back into the game. But again, with Kyagno taking this, the question is what is he going to do with all those resources? Maybe transfer them to Koi because he's going for four Stargate Phoenix. He's even got Ion, Pulse, Crystals. Then why did he buy this then? I don't know. You're not getting air upgrades, which is a macro mistake. Does he have money? Yeah, it's got money. I I think you should be taking these gas because an airboat generally is more gas than middle heavy. Oh, the Gyarados yeah, actually tried to go for another disruptor job with Phoenix support. Something you you will never see in one v one with the Phoenix and that GG is called, and Gyarados yeah, and Koi knock out Fat and Pokoya out of the tournament. All right. Alright, so uh, it's going to take a minute to log back in and everything. Um, with that, we've got one more match uh, for tonight. Uh, this is the the last match of the losers round. Well, of round one in the lower bracket. Okay, this is the last match of the night. The so this is in the lower bracket of the well of our tournament. We have spawning at the bottom. We saw them eliminated prior. Hopefully it will will have a better result in this game. It is SCPH Pole and SCPH Dismal. And their opponents also in the loser bracket. It is Biomica Fan from Da Fan and MFSC2 Biomica Fan. Now, this is Prez and Azur. Um, I assume Azur is the Terran player and Prez the Protoss. Now, in the actual tournament, they were knocked down to the lower bracket by. Yes, by Justice Simon and Upli. Or Upli. And now they're trying to, you know, find their way back to the bracket. Same thing for for Dismals. Unfortunately, they've hit another pair of Australians. Um, hopefully it'll be different to, as one team is going for... for well, one team ran Protoss, Press, probably, I think. Um, so let's talk about poker as a map. Um, poker as a map is pretty curious because you have four gases together. 
I think a single liberator. No, it, it's just not possible for a liberator to siege all of it. But you know, they're really, really close together. The bases are closer even than Emerald City and Rock Scallion. That being said, you do have a single ramp going to the bases. However, this is over at the natural. And you do have two easy natural bases to yourself. And then after that, it just kind of sprawls out. It's got much clearer uh, base positioning than some of the others. But it's also similar to Emerald City that you know, getting the first, second, third base. Very, very straightforward. Um, the other curious thing about this map is that they've got this long winding path. Uh, throughout this section that there are bases that you can take. Okay, so this replay was set in by uh, um, Dismo. So we can actually see the, the chat on, on his side. I would have assumed that they should be should have been in the Discord channel, so I don't know why they're typing. Uh, Paul is not making SCV. Okay, he's now continuing production, gonna get a factory. Alright, so in terms of 1v1 builds, it looks like the Northern Terran, um, I think Ezer, is going for the more standard factory first, and then we'll get the Expo after getting Hellions. <coughs> Paul, however, went for a faster Expo and therefore will be behind on units. It comes down to how well he and Dismal can defend. Dismal, however, is actually going to go for a Reactor and is probably going to swap this out to get Hellions. He's also getting his bases. A Bill Micah fan, a Prez on the other hand, is just, he's just back going up, he don't really care. His check of choice is going to be the Twilight Council. We're going to have to see if that's for DT's charge. Glaives? Hobblick. Glaives is just the most likely, unlikely option. Okay, so here come a couple of Reapers. They're going to go into the base. Let's see what they can kill. No, a good wall off on the part of uh, Paul. You can actually just, you know, rotate around, but a single adept is coming back to deal with this. But there is a Hellion. This adept is quite dead if the units focus fire on it. No. Okay, a good defense. Yeah, so here's the thing, like, because of the way that this defense works, like, two hellions from this one will just caught out and kill down every single SCV here, all three of them are gonna die. A strong pressure by just Terran units and a single adept. Uh, so, so, so here's the thing, like, these hellions are gonna spawn the very good micron of and they're gonna prevent this one from actually getting anything done. More Reapers are pushing their way through. I don't think they need jump spots. Um, a single a couple of Marines gonna come out, but the Adepts can what we want them. And the Reapers, the DPS are just too high. He needs a tank, he needs something. Oh, oh no, they're at the base. Paul has opened the game. Uh, yeah, a Stalker is here, but all the SCVs, like, he's gonna take significant SCV losses. He's getting a Banshee, and that will theoretically hold this. And there is a Stalker for anti air. Um, right, Paul and Dismal are unfortunately just falling apart. More Hellions are coming out. Um, there's no tank for this on there. You don't want to add on. You want more units. Um, and I think they're just dead. Because all these guys have to do is just rally units across the map. Keep the pressure on. A Viking is produced. Why? Well, you need to land the Viking, but you don't. That's not um, happening. Oh, this one actually wanted to go for DCs, but with his ally taking so much damage and leaving the gate open, I really think that this game is well over. There was cloak was not caught so if these stalkers actually bunch up, they could take out the um, banshee. But again, a lot of workers kill a lot of lost fighting time for both sides. Let's take a look at okay, the attack is still ongoing. In fact, um, oh no. It, to pull the work because why didn't he land the Viking? I think Smoke not noticed, I had to have noticed, right? Okay, the attack is eventually ended up, it's still ongoing. Three stalkers have come up and are making Paul's base, you know, just miserable behind all this. Uh, Prez's third base is almost done. More Reapers coming in via the side, actually. So they're gonna get even more SCV kills. And here's the thing, like, the other side, this one's finally getting a BC, but. Even if you TP it out across the map, you're not really going to get that much done because yeah, the Viking is eventually shot down. I don't know why it wasn't landed. It helped a lot against the... Uh, the uh, oh, I think he even does able to... All of the northern attack for save one Reaper is actually able to escape. I think the attack is finally ended. Okay, the BC has teleported, so some car damage can be done, but he attacks the Protoss which is unfortunate because these stalkers have 
linked. And um, yeah, you can fly away, but oh, a cyclone coming out to get that extra lock on damage. There's a lot of missile damage. You do a lot. No, don't, don't just move while you turn it around. And uh, yep, if you didn't turn it around, there's a good chance that the BC might be able to fly away. When we look at the losses, yeah. The southern team has lost 22 and 19 SCVs, call it 40, and the northern team has lost 4 probes. All the probes were probably lost in a 1 BC attack, and 4 probes is 200 minerals, or BC is... <laughs> more than that, okay, cloak magic coming in, and there is... This attack but there's no anti-air. This base is also wide open for the cloak magic harassment. I mean, kills 8 kills already. It's just relentless attack after attack after attack on the northern team. It really came down to the southern team, you know, not being able to, to defend the god's media expo. They didn't get siege tanks, which are the cornerstone of any team defense, especially when you opening up uh, this greedy. I think this boss is attempting to go into back because of the resources. These badges are, you know, taking a lot of mercy and going after the CC rather than the SCVs for a little bit, but now they've changed their minds. They're like, you know what, let's just, let's just kill. Um, a single Colossus is coming out and retreating from a tank which just burns to the ground. This base is forfeit. This base is forfeit. This was at port. Unfortunately just getting annihilated. This BC is forced to... to oh, this is actually... Um, Azure's BC. Right. And they don't actually have anything to... But this is making better effects. But the yep, MGG is called. And with that, the southern team is defeated and unfortunately eliminated from the tournament. So as we wait for them to close it out... Okay, that's it. Disciples is left. He said it the replay, so it stands here. Uh, but yeah, these were the games. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, if you like videos like this, do like and subscribe. And stay tuned, there will be more StarCraft 2 content on this channel. And with that, um, like, subscribe and... See you next time.